Over time, I think what came to interest me was not that 1% of activities which is already named copying, where we recognize copying, but the 99% of the time where we think we're not copying and we think that we're out of the range of copying. That when you make a copy, what you're doing is taking the image of something, the likeness of it, and making it appear somewhere else. You know, you take the appearance and you put it in a place where theoretically it doesn't belong. And the more I thought about that, the more it seems like in actual fact just about everything happens that way. That, you know, to, to some degree everything is, happens by the act of being taken and transformed and renamed. You know, including ourselves, the fact that we have a name the fact that we have an idea of ourselves is already an appropriation of ourselves, too. And in some way, it might be hard to imagine how we could exist without appropriation. I, I learned a lot about copying from you. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, I, I guess what interests me, like thinking about your early work, your first two books, they were basically composed of copies. I'm a poet, and I was born in New York City, and I had the good fortune of meeting a lot of artists very early, 1960 and 61 and 62. And um, by chance, none of them were famous, and who they turn out, as you know, one of them was Andy Warhol and the pop artists, and Bob Rauschenberg and Jasper Johns. And they were, they were friends of mine, and we saw each other on a day-to-day -day basis, and nobody was famous, but we saw each, I saw them working. And I saw them all using the found image, particularly in the early 60s, like 61 and 62, Andy Warhol, before he had his first show and when he had his first show, was using found images. And I, year uh, for the first couple of years, by 1962, the autumn, fall of 1962, I said to myself, I mean, I saw Andy Daly for two years doing these paintings, that if he can use the found image, why can't I? And then I, got, I made my first poem using a found image from the New York Times. And then after that, I sort of, I sort of did what these are. The, the, interest, the point of this, the interesting thing that I learned from these artists, Andy Wall and Barbara Rauschenberg and Jasper Johns, was what they, how they picked an image. I mean, you saw them. I mean, there were all these images. And somehow, they would pick that one. Not that, not that, not that. And on a daily basis, you, you sort of understood why they picked that, even though it was, was a non-verbal non teaching. And it went on for years. I did found images from 1962 to 1981. And it, and it progressed over the years. It became first just a found image. And, and then I did what they did. I made a collage out of it using, I mean, spending a lot of time thinking about it and a lot of time choosing the images just the way they did. And they became found collages that went on. He edited my book, so they changed yearly. I'd see what I do and then, and then develop that to a next stage the next year, and it went on for, for 20 years. And the interesting point of it is that I went to school like everyone and studied Duchamp and the fu Russian futurists and the constructionists and this and that, but that was not the influence. It was seeing them copy enabled me to copy. Thank you. This last poem I'm going to do is called Thanks for Nothing. And I started writing it on my 70th birthday in December of 2006. Thanks for nothing on my 70th birthday. I want to give my thanks to everyone for everything. And as a token of my appreciation, I want to offer back to you all my good and bad habits as magnificent, priceless jewels, wish-fulfilling gems, satisfying your every need and want. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thanks. May every drug I ever took come back and get you high. May you smoke a joint with William and spend some intimate time with his mind, more profound than any book he wrote. 
America, thanks for the neglect. I did it without you. <laughs> Let us celebrate poetic justice. You and I never were, never tried to do anything, and never succeeded. Thanks for introducing me to the face of the naked mind. Thanks for nothing. Well, America may not love you, but Canada does. <laughs>